Today I want to conclude on how to handle the seasons of life. I want you to discover how God uses breakdowns to create breakthroughs so we can break out into new seasons of victory with the Lord on our side. On Tuesday, June 11th, we learned from the encounter that Mary and Martha had with Jesus regarding Lazarus' death that they experienced a delayed season for hope. It's in those moments when there seems to be no answer to their prayers and their pain was so real that they got to the edge when it came to their faith. Today, I want to conclude our discussion on handling the seasons of life as we go through the final season that we should experience after dealing with the difficult, the waiting, and the delayed season, and that is the divine season of the miraculous in your life. Now in John 11, 39, it says, Jesus said, take away the stone. Take away the stone. Now the Jews were not on the same page to take away the stone because like it says in the King James Version, they said, he stinketh. If you have a junior high boy who doesn't understand the concept of deodorant, then you know what the Jews were talking about, amen? He stinketh. Well, that's exactly what they were dealing with. Those who heard Jesus say, take away the stone, were thinking that Jesus just wanted to see the embodiment, or perhaps the Jews thought maybe Jesus thought he had been dead for only a couple of hours, and that's why he wanted to see the stone rolled away. But there was a long time of decay and delay for Jesus to heal Lazarus. And then Jesus began to pray to God the Father as the servants of Mary and Martha rolled the stone away. Jesus said to God, you know and I know, but they don't know. And I'm praying for you so that they know I am not doing this on my own and that you and I have had a connection that I'm here to do your will. So as he prayed for a while, then he called forth Lazarus and a dead man came out of the tomb. Later in John 11:45, it says, Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, put their faith in Him. To what extent would God go to grow your faith in Him? I guess this death might be the limit, but I know in this situation Jesus wanted to make a point. Jesus actually created a season of difficulty, waiting, and despair so that He could display a divine season of the miraculous for the sake of our faith as men and women and for the sake of the people here today. And if we've ever doubted Jesus, he closed the loop with Lazarus by raising him from the dead. You know what makes the difference for you and me? It's our response and what determines how should we respond. You see this over and over in those seasons of disappointment, of waiting and despair. And that is during those negative and trying seasons, it can drive us away from experiencing God's divine miracles if we're not careful. Our response is huge. And during your seasons of life, who you have around you will either help you or hurt you. They'll make you grow in your faith or cause you to reject Christ. That's why you must be very careful who you walk with and what they say to you about the things of God. Because eventually, here's what can happen to you. If you're not careful, people can make you become disappointed at God and then become disappointed about God. So be careful, friends, about who you hang around with. You could go from saying, why me, God, to there is no God. God can't be trusted anymore because He did not come through for me. That's why, relations, that's why the relationships you have with people from the church or people of faith in the community are the only way you can survive your trials if you're not careful. You show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Godly people will help us create a frame and a context about our circumstance and remind us that God still loves us that He has a plan and, and is with us. There is hope because God is still alive and God is not dead and God is not silent. So don't forget, friends, God will leverage for us no matter how difficult the seasons we're facing today or we face tomorrow because He wants to do something in us and through us. We have to remind ourselves that in the frame of our pain that God is in it with us, that He's never left us or forsaked us. When you lean into our, your, your Heavenly Father in the midst of your disappointments, in the midst of your waiting or despair, in time, God will use that divine season to grow your faith miraculously. If we can get to that place where we acknowledge that God is doing something in us in order to do something through us, perhaps that is when our faith gets bigger during the seasons of life that we all experience. Here's my suggestions. Whatever you're dealing with right now, if you're in a season of disappointment, waiting, or despair, by telling God things like, why didn't you show up? Where are you, Lord? Perhaps you're praying your, your season to change. Maybe you're believing God for healing, a job, or a relationship to be mended. And with all the things you're crying out to God, my prayer is that going through one of these seasons in 2020, that you would just say, Lord, I just need you to see, I just need to see you in this season of disappointment. I need to see you in the season of waiting and despair. And even if he doesn't turn out the way, and even if things don't turn out the way you want them to be, 
I need to see you in my season because even if I can't see your hand, I can trust your heart. And in this, Lord, I won't give up. Let God know that today. Because we, we want to come out, of, out, of the, out through the end with bigger, stronger, bolder faith. Whether we like it or not, God has chosen to use those seasons of life. He's chosen to use disappointments, waiting, despair, to grow our faith so that we can experience the divine seasons of the miraculous. May the reminder of this year be a season of divine miracles for you. Thanks for taking time out of your day. And remember, when it seems all hope is God gone, God still does miracles. I love you, and I pray you have an outstanding day.